If you are writing a research paper, report or thesis, then the institute or publication that you are submitting a paper to might have provided you with a template. Until about a few years ago, major science and technology publications used to provide you with templates in the form of LaTeX files. LaTeX is actually a typesetting engine and programming language in which you specify the content and provide commands to format sections of your content. It produces excellently typeset documents. However, in recent years, most science and technology publications allow you to submit drafts for research papers or thesis reports using Word documents. Typically, the institute or publication will provide you with instructions about the format and fonts to use. Or they may even provide you with a template in the form of a Word document containing instructions that you can use to quickly format your report or paper. In this video, Let's take the example of an IEEE template and see how to write a sample research paper using Microsoft Word. I have downloaded the IEEE paper template. I have also provided a link to the IEEE paper template in the description of this video. So be sure to download the template and try along. Let's start with the template instructions. Let's say we have the title for our paper. It's asking us to use the style that is named paper title. Let's select our title and check the styles section. If the paper title style does not appear in the quick gallery, then you will need to click the down arrow icon and click apply styles to see a listing of all the available styles then choose the paper title style. Next, the template already gives us space to add the names of up to six authors. So we can directly edit the provided details and add the name of the authors, their departments, organization and other details. If you check the next page in the template for instructions about this, it says that for papers with more than six authors, Add author names horizontally moving to a third row if needed for more than 8 authors. But for papers with less than 6 authors, to change the default, adjust the template as follows. Selection highlight all the author and affiliation lines, let's do that. And change the number of columns by selecting the columns icon from the MS Word standard toolbar and then select the correct number of columns from the selection palette. So assume we have only two authors for our IEEE paper. Let's try to select the author selection here and change the columns to two from the default of three. Next, we need to add an abstract for our paper. Again, they have provided you with a sample abstract. If you click any word in this abstract, you will notice that it uses the style named abstract. As they have already provided you with some sample content, if you have content for your abstract, you can directly paste your content on top of this content and you can even add some keywords. In many of my previous videos, I have highlighted the importance of using styles to organize the content in your Word documents. If you look at the second page of this template, you will notice that the template instructions also highly recommend that you use styles. Let's read that particular section. Component heads identify the different components of your paper and are not topically subordinate to each other. Examples include acknowledgements and references. And for these, the correct style to use is the heading 5 style. Use figure caption for your figure captions and table head for your table title. Run-in heads such as abstract will require you to apply a style in addition to the style provided by the drop-down menu to differentiate the head from the text. So in this case, they mean italics. The main takeaway from this set of instructions 
is to use the styles heading 1 to heading 2 based on your headings and use the heading 5 style for your acknowledgements and references. You should also be using figure caption for figure captions and the table head style for the table title. Let's now look at how to add figures and tables. Let's see what the template says. Place figures and tables at the top and bottom of columns. Avoid placing them in the middle of columns. Large figures and tables may span across both columns. Figure captions should be below the figures. Table heads should appear above the tables. Let's try to add a sample figure. Note that they want us to use the label fig dot in the caption for your figures and to use 8 point times new roman font. For tables, they want us to use the table head above the table. From the example, they seem to prefer uppercase for the table head and to use roman numerals for the table number. Let's now look at how to add equations. Let's first review the instructions in the template. You will need to determine whether or not your equation should be typed using either the Times New Roman or the symbol font. Please do not use any other font. To create multi-leveled equations, it may be necessary to treat the equation as a graphic and insert it into the text after your paper is styled. Let's assume we do not have multi-level equations for now. Let's try to enter a sample equation. The easiest way is to use the ALT plus E shortcut followed by the backslash key and the symbol name to enter symbols. You need to add a space after the symbol name and you'll see that symbol appear. Or you can also use the insert menu and the equation drop down to add your equation. Let's look at the instructions for the equation numbering. Number equations consecutively. Equation numbers within parentheses are to be positioned flush right as in 1 in parentheses using a right tab stop. To make your equations more compact, you may use the solidus. The exponential function or appropriate exponents. Italicize Roman symbols for quantities and variables, but not for Greek symbols. Use a long dash rather than a hyphen for a minus sign. Punctuate equations with commas or periods when they are part of a sentence, as in a plus b equals the symbol. Note that the equation must be centered using a center tab stop. Be sure that the symbols in your equation have been defined before or immediately follow the equation. To reference the equation, use one italics in parentheses, not ic1 or equation1, except at the beginning of a sentence. Note that they want your equation number to appear to the right. They also want your equation to be at the center. There are two ways to do this. The first way is to write your equation and numbering separately. Alternatively, you can insert a table with three columns. Then remove the table borders and insert your equation and equation number in the second and third column respectively. To cross-reference the equation, they want you to use italics 1 in parentheses and not ic one or equation one except at the beginning of a sentence. To use this, we can add a cross reference by going to the references menu. Let's add a cross reference to the equation and specify what should appear in the position where you're adding the cross reference. Next, let us add some acknowledgements and references. They want you to use the style heading 5 for the acknowledgement 
and references component heads. So let's do that by going to the styles section on the home menu. Finally, you will need to insert a list of references. If you are using Word's built-in reference manager or even a free reference manager such as Zotero, this is easy to do if you have gone through some of my earlier videos on adding references to your document. Well, that covers pretty much everything you need to know about how to format your research paper so that it's suitable for submission to a publication such as IEEE. Thank you for watching.